All right, Sarah, it shows you're connected. Can you hear us now? You're muted though. I can, thank you. Okay, I had perfect. to leave Excellent. the Whova app and do it through Zoom. Now it's working. Can you right. still see like the, the chat? Yeah, so I'll just stay on that link. I'll, I'll stay on that page. I'll be listening, but I'll be monitoring on that page. Okay, perfect. Thank I you. will go ahead and let everybody in. Okay, I think we're just waiting on one more to come in. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the last session of today. Uh, you are in Becoming a Tech Mentor, Leveraging Person-Centered Technology for Engagement, Inclusion, and Employability. Uh, I'm going to let our speakers introduce themselves because there's quite a few of them. Uh, but please remember, <laughs> as always, to rate this session at the end or at the very least before you know the conference ends as we do use those uh, to inform our, our planning in future years. And um, just so you know, that's on a scale of one to five with five being like absolute best and one being absolute worst. And take it away. Hey, thank you. So I am Gretchen Ward. I am the clinical director for Empower Me. Unfortunately, Dr. Maria McWirt was not able to join us today. She had a um, doctor's appointment for a family member that was urgent, so that had to happen. Uh, otherwise, she would be here. So, <laughs> and then we me, I have Kevin Winslow, our director of development. Hello. And Sarah Meadows, our migraine, our my guide program coordinator, who'll be helping us out and answering any questions. She's also been hanging out of our virtual booth uh, for the past couple of days. So if you stop by there, you'll be able to chat with her for additional questions. And all of us will be there too afterwards. So thank you for joining us. And Kevin is going to share his screen so we can share our PowerPoint presentation. The handout will be uploaded after the presentation. We apologize for not getting it up there prior. All right, can you see this? Yes. All right. All right. All right. So, sorry, information. <laughs> That's what my guide is. All right, so we want to first talk a little bit about our mission and vision. So we have Empower Me believes that technology can eliminate systemic disparities and transform human relationships. Uh, it was founded by a Virginia family. Um, the, Dr. McWhirt uh, and her son, Daniel, founded the company to support her other son who is autistic and has extra support needs. And so they developed my guide to empower him to be more able to interact and decided to share it with the rest of the Commonwealth by becoming Medicaid providers. And um, we with this technology works as a cognitive functioning device to help individuals understand and interact with their world on their own terms. So not only can they process information in a way that's meaningful to them through multimedia guides, which we're gonna show you in a little bit, but they can also communicate with caregivers, providers, and anyone they choose by sharing access to that information. Okay, next slide, Kevin. All right, so we talked a little bit about technology parity. And one of our biggest missions of, as a company is to really give the individuals that we work with the power of personal use technology, because I don't know how many of you carry around your cell phone and look at it for to communicate, to check your schedule, to look up information on Google, to um, buy groceries for everything. You know, that is our one-stop shop. A lot of us refer to it as an extension of our brain. But what we've noticed, and I'm an occupational therapist by trade, and one of the things that we notice is that there's a big gap in accessible technology. And it's often reactive rather than proactive because technology moves incredibly quickly. Um, I know my generation, I was born in 80, so I grew up with 
computers starting in elementary school and, you know, big floppy disks. And now we're into everything in the palm of my hand makes things a little bit different. So we have had to adapt quickly. And the accessibility features are always one step behind because technology is created for and by neurotypical users. So no one, when they're creating the technology, is thinking about really how is someone who needs extra information going to be able to access this or needs vision support. And so we have kind of made this proactive technology, which allows us to create person-centered customization for each individual through using MyGuide. So each guide and device is able to be customized to meet their needs using standard accessibility tools plus our MyGuide features. And then we also believe that the other key important piece to being able to empower our individuals with intellectual disabilities or other cognitive deficits to be able, or other support needs really, to be able to use the technology is training and technical assistance for the support systems. Because a lot of our traditional support systems may not feel as comfortable with using new groundbreaking technology and trying to invest the time and the training to research it ourselves. So we kind of provide that wraparound support by giving their support system the training that they need to be able to make those customizations themselves. It's really simple. All right, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. So this is my guide. My guide is a platform. You can see there on the side, um, one of our my guide users being very excited. He was making his cereal for the very first time. Um, <laughs> and what our guide layout looks like. So everything we call is customizable and self-directed software and it's cognitive functioning support. So it helps our users pres by presenting information using pictures, audio, video, media, to allow them to really be able to understand what the information is being shared in a way that's meaningful to them, as well as respond in a meaningful way. There's secure and virtual access for designated caregivers, which we'll show you what that means. But as I mentioned before, the user is in control of who they would like to share their information with. And it also allows for real-time verification of interaction or intervention. So, so we have some providers that actually have been using MyGuide to help support individuals remotely, and they can see what the individuals are responding to while they're on a Zoom call. So maybe using telehealth isn't this traditional telehealth method. Someone may not verbally be able to respond to you or with speaking words. Um, but they could use a specially crafted guide to respond to questions that are being presented um, during that same time. So that's how that works a little bit. And then we're gonna go to the next slide. So this is our map of what we talk about when we talk about the user. So we know that our users uh, reside and work in many different communities. They're in day programs, they're in employment supports, home residential, schools, colleges, and then they interact with their therapists and friends. We want my guide to be able to link them with all of those environments and be consistent means of support across any environment. For example, we have this picture is Heather, who you're gonna meet in a little bit in a video. And Heather self-regulation strategy is something that for most of us would seem a little bit different. Heather finds that looking at images of um, the Twin Towers and the Pentagon from 9-11 is very calming for her. Um, can be very triggering for other people if someone wants to come up and talk to you about that when they're upset. But Heather is able to access those supports, looking at those images and her images of bank vaults across all of these environments whenever she needs them. And what we found was that she was much more regulated and happy from everyone that works with her in her day program. That's where we met her, was at her day program, Arc of Harrisonburg. So go ahead and let's go to the next slide. So Kevin's gonna talk a little bit about My Guide Tech Mentors and what tech mentoring means. But really when we think of tech mentor, what a tech mentor is, is anyone in the person's life who knows the person 
and their preferences and is able to help them utilize technology to be able to meet their needs. So Kevin, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to you and let you kind of give a little bit more in-depth information on tech mentoring. Sure, okay, hi. <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> um, so when it comes to tech mentoring, um, you don't even have to really go into my guide yet. <laughs> What it boils down to is helping someone, especially a new user, start to use technology as a personal resource. And that could be anything. So a tech mentor really starts with people. The reason someone needs one is because, uh, as Gretchen's been saying this whole time, there's that disparity. There is no technology out there for them. So they have to learn how to use technology that is made for other people. And so what Tech Mentor will do is support them as they start to learn those basics, that early learning stuff of turning on devices, um, how to swipe across the screen, how to access um, your email, and how to use your email. Um, and then we get into some more specifics. Once, once you've passed those steps, you get to these specifics of what kind of software is out there specifically for them that can address exactly what they need and how they can use this technology for themselves to boost their own independence. So with that said, I'm going to show you first Heather, um, who's going to explain how tech mentors have helped her. So first I have to stop sharing this. All right. Yeah. I'll get there, I promise. <laughs> share. You're doing great, Kevin. Thank you. Okay, share sound is on and play. Can you hear this? About what you use your my guide for. Can you can you make it a little um, bit louder? Well, when I get nervous, I have this one lesson that is like a bag Good. full and when I get real nervous, I can look at the bank vault, the Pentagon, the Twin Towers. And it helps me to relax and calm down and, and think about what I'm nervous about and think about, do I really need to be nervous about what I'm nervous about? And do I really need to be stressing out what I'm stressing out about? And do I really need to be angry about what I'm angry about? And it just helps me to de-stress and prioritize and think about the logic in life. And what makes the My Guide so special that it, that it can do that for you? Was it that you could customize it yourself? Yes, ma'am. Tell me about that. Well, being able to have a device in front of you to where you can customize it yourself mean I feel like means the world to someone like me with a developmental disability because other devices out there are customized for you already. But this one, you customize yourself. And that just means all the world to me because you can make up your own words. You can put your own pictures in it of like your favorite things and stuff like that. And it just, it just opened up a whole new world to me. And, and to empower me, thank you so much. You're so welcome, Heather. And Medicaid, too. Thank you so much for paying for it and covering it. And I love it so much. I mean, it's it is just opened up a whole new world. And I'm able to do so much more than I wasn't able to do before. What kinds of things does it let you do? Like, somebody was having to remind me to take my meds before. Now I have it to where it's set up, where I have an alarm that will go off to remind me to take my medicine. And I just tell staff, hey, look, my alarm's going off. I'm taking my medicine in the afternoon. 
where before staff would have to literally remind me. Or now they don't have to do that. I have an alarm that goes off and that alarm says, okay, time to take my meds. Well, so that really helps you be more independent. Oh yeah. And I just say, look, my alarm is going off. I'm going to take my, my 12 o'clock medicine. And it really helps take that reminder off staff's plate because the alarm is doing it for me. And then you're the one in control. Yes. Tell me about how that feels to be in control. It gives me more power. It gives me more freedom. It gives me more independence. To say, hey, look, I'm the boss. It's good to be the boss, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Instead of them being the boss, I'm the boss over my medication. Over when I'm nervous, over when I'm angry. So there's a lot of problems you used to have that you can overcome now. Yes. I'm really proud of you, Heather. Well, thank you. You've taken this tool and you've made it work for you. Yes. What would you say to other clients who aren't real sure about it? I would say absolutely get, give it a whirl because you're going to find that it's really going to help you. You may be optimistic at first, but once you try it and you do a few lessons on it, you're going to find that this tool is really going to be beneficial to you. And I would say absolutely fill up paperwork, get your case manager to help you fill up paperwork and get one because it can, it will really change your life for the better. I mean, it's just an amazing tool. And how about your tech mentors? Talk about that program about how they help you learn how to use the tool? Well, my tech mentors like Tabitha, um, they help me create lessons, like for going out in the community. Like, for example, I have one called Going to the Bank. And it like walks me through what I need to do when I get to the bank like going up to the bank teller, asking for my money, filling out my withdrawal slip. And sometimes at the bank, I can actually see the vault. At the older banks, not at the newer ones, but at the older banks, I can walk in the door and actually the bank vault's like right there. That's cool. And I love bank vaults. I mean, just thoroughly love them. <laughs> I love the big door, the wheel, the alarm, the dial, the timer, the way these, and I'm an expert on bank faults. I've read all about them online and, and about the door, the alarm, the wheel, the timer, all of that. How you set the timer even. It's just phenomenal. I'm also an expert on 9-11. I understand. I've heard that. And the heroism that went into 9 11. All right. He left Heather, so they asked. Love Heather. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I would now like to talk about, or show you rather, what Heather was talking about there with my guide. Um, and as I'm pulling it up, well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, here we go. I want to address that there are um, different perspectives when it comes to my guide. There's the user's perspective, of course, and then the tech mentor perspective, which is who is going to help um, the user 
utilize my guide to its uh, fullest potential to help them with their own independence. Share, is this? Yes. <laughs> All right. Can you see this? Yes. Okay. This is my guide. Welcome. Um, all of our content in my guide is organized into libraries, which is then organized onto shelves and then organized into guides. So each guide, of course, has its own subject or topic. Um, this is our public library, which is accessible to anyone right now, the public, if you will. Uh, you can go and sign up for a free account. And hopefully, Sarah can put into the chat, you can go to either app.myguide.care, or you can download My Guide by Empower Me on a mobile device or your phone or tablet or whatever. Um, and just try out this information, or I'm sorry, try out all these guides. Um, so I want to go into a couple of samples that we have here. Oh, all of that material on the public library, those are based on uh, things that we'll see from our clients or from professional users. And we'll see patterns that we will pull into template guides that we make accessible. We don't consider ourselves content experts um, because of course we don't know everybody, but um, we have those samples so that people don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel over and over, especially new users. They can start from something that already exists that maybe had worked for somebody else. And then they can bring it into their personal library and then customize it from there. So they can put in their own pictures and all of that. So I'm gonna show you a couple of guides here. Um, uh, let's start with something like this. This was actually based on an ISP for work, wasn't it? Um, hello, time to get ready for work. Let's make sure you have what, you're, what you need. Do you have your safety apron? Yes, organized in front of me. Yes, I'm wearing it. No, I need help. And you can see here right away that any, anything that was pre-programmed in um, can be customized itself. All of the font, the size of the text can all be customized. Um, you can use pictures here instead of text if you wanted or GIFs or whatever, videos. Um, all right, do you have your cleaning gloves? Yes, organized in front of me. Yes, I'm wearing them. No, I need help. Um, do you have your safety mask? I'm wearing it. Do you have all of your rags? Uh, no, I can't find one. <laughs> and then I think, yeah, then it just goes through what each of the rags, uh, what, what each, what the purpose of each of them is. And I'll speed through this one. All right, great job. Have a good day, stay safe. And then another one we can check out. Um, Gretchen likes to show this one off, the apartment mm -hmm. checklist, <laughs> when they might be leaving their apartment. Uh, let's get started with the layout. How many rooms are in the apartment? So the, this is ahead. one that we did for a client who was in the process of moving into his own apartment. So he was going out with this community housing guide and looking at different apartments um, or with his family. And so his community housing guide was able, we were able to share this information um, with the community housing guide who wasn't able to be with them when they were viewing all of the apartments. Um, sort of thinking about like, what are you, what types of things to think about when you're looking at a different apartment? You know? Um, so these are for pretty high level users. It's mainly questions with um, word options, not a lot of pictures, but for all of these things where you see just the word options, uh, we could be also be changed to picture options for answer responses with either the standard list buttons or with just the icons, which we'll show you a couple of examples of those as well. Is there anything specific in here you wanted me to stop on or should I just No, that's okay. We're just kind of we're just kind of clicking through and seeing what's there. Mm -hmm. All right. And you can see you can uh, you can have pre-programmed in responses where either the user themselves programs in 
their typical choices, or their tech mentor can help them with that. Or they can also have open-ended responses where they either type or dictate their responses. Um, so let's go with maybe get a job and keep it. All right, it's a sample, some learning objectives here. This is kind of cool. So um, job status, are you currently employed? Yes. Awesome. Do you need help maintaining your job skills? Let's say no. All right. Your job coach will reach out to you soon. In the meantime, what do you need help with? Well, I definitely want to raise um, <laughs> uh, new responsibilities and maybe, maybe something else. Okay. If other, um, let's see, someone stole my lunch. <laughs> And now I'm, uh, I'll try something else actually in the same page. Uh, are you currently employed? No. What do you need help with? I need help. Um, I need help with my resume. All right. It takes me to a resume page so we can put in some resume skills here or developing a resume. Um, and then at the end here, do you need anything else? Well, now that I've done my resume, I want to find some available jobs. All right. We jump over. Here's some jobs seeking skills. Now, um, now I need help keeping my job. Okay. Hop over here to those skills. And then maybe I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. And then let's see. So this one, this next one, actually, I'll show you this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is the first guide I ever made. And I actually made it for my little brother before I worked for Empower Me. Um, I was helping my little brother who was struggling with the task analysis that he was working on with his ABA therapist. And this was how to wash his dishes, that laminate that they, that many <laughs> ABA therapists will use. For him, it was just a little too chaotic. He could not follow the clip art steps. So we made this for him, dishwashing. And I always like to address that I was a little jaded when my guide first came into his life. I had been his DSP for all these years and technology kept coming in and coming and going. People kept coming and going. So I was totally jaded, but I thought, sure, I'll try it out. Step one, turn on the water. Step two, rinse the dish. Step three, use a little bit of soap and so on and so forth. It ran with a timer so he was hands-free when he's using this and then it was also reading out loud to him because you can turn on text to speech which will read any text on a page out loud to the user so he was hands-free and really only had to look over for reference and the reason why i say that is because these pictures in here are of his actual surroundings that picture that person right there in that window that's me taking a picture of my parents sink when i was my brother's dsp so um so my role evolved very quickly from just kind of a broom going behind my brother, sweeping up his chaos to helping him learn how to develop skills on his own. When I would try physically, he would just see that I'm doing stuff and be like, okay, thanks. And kind of walk off. Or if I were to ask him to do something, Thing. Hey, bud, now that you're done with your dish, now that you're done um, eating your spaghetti, can you wash your dish? Well, he's going to throw that dish in my face and end up on the floor having a total meltdown. For whatever reason, putting in this as sort of this tool for him, he just followed it. He just followed the instructions, the prompts. So I became obsessed with it and I helped develop some for his dishwasher, or I'm sorry, that was his dishwashing routine, but for his laundry <laughs> routine, his hygiene. So, you know, I wasn't just kind of standing there banging on the door when he's taking a shower, making sure he rinses the shampoo out of his hair. Instead, during that time, I was taking care of the stuff that he shouldn't be doing. You know, I'm making sure that his ABA therapist is going to show up that day so that he doesn't later have um, uh, a behavior, you know, as a result, if maybe they don't show up on time or something like that. My role evolved so that my purpose as his DSP became far more efficient and effective and purposeful. And 
my um, role as big brother actually changed from just this machine who was kind of, you know, like I said, the broom sweeping up chaos. I got to do like the cool big brother stuff where A, I'm showing him through my guide how to develop these skills that big brothers are supposed to show their little brothers. But then on top of that, I get to take him out to like pizza, you know, and take him to a movie and I get to do all the cool big brother stuff. So uh -huh. I, I love talking about that guide and I could go on and on about stuff that I showed with, or did with <laughs> my brother, but I won't bore you. Um, but it's, um we yeah. eventually did really quick just to finish this out we got my brother from everyone telling us he he's never going to be able to do any of this stuff independently we got him from he can't wash his own dishes to now he's cooking his own meals and he's deciding he's making decisions about what he wants in his lunchbox the next day and he's obsessed with that too he will open his lunchbox just over and over making sure nobody changed his lunch order now that he's packing his own lunches and doing all those things so i i mean all of these things that he was told he wasn't going to be able to do just introducing this tool which is in the modern age and this population is typically kept away from technology so frequently especially technology like this well now we have it for him and he's making decisions for the first time in his life it's amazing anyway sorry that's that's my own little that's okay. <laughs> i love i love hearing about luke's success um, because i first met luke when he was initially introduced to my guide and one of the things um, i know there was a question in the chat that karen asked if we were going to be showing anything for people that have more significant cognitive disabilities that are more simplistic if you don't read. So what I do want you to know is anything that you see where you see text, we have text to speech. So all of the words in the screen can be read for the person and that's all completely customizable. So um, Kevin, can you go show the voice of my guide in the settings just so you sure. can kind of hear, see and hear uh, the options that you have for changing this voice, uh, it is in accessibility. There we go. All right, voice. so uh, we have both uh, text-to-speech and automatic text-to-speech. So the, the one option is either they tap and hold over text and it reads it out loud to them or a picture. You can also have a picture there, they tap on it and it can read out what the picture is. Um, or uh, then with automatic text-to-speech, that as soon as they get to a page, it's gonna read any of the text that's on that page. Um, and then we have, like Gretchen was talking about, we have Voice of My Guide, which you can control both the speaking rate and the, the voice pitch. And also now on the web version, it's a little different, but on a mobile version, so the, the kind that our users typically um, are using, <laughs> um, they also have an option to actually change the speech itself or the, the uh, the voice itself. So there, there's like hundreds of different voices in there. If you wanted an Australian accent, pop one in. <laughs> um, and then let's see if I can do a quick little. Hello world. Yeah, that's it. This is the voice of my guy. Can you hear that? Mm -hmm. I could hear it. Okay, so that's, yeah, that's uh, just a quick little sample. That's, I guess the generic. Like I Hello world. This is the voice of my guy. Let me speed it up a little bit. Hello world. This is the voice of my guy. Some people say, you know, a lot of times when people are trying to be make things accessible, they make decisions about what they think people are going to need. So they may decide that someone needs a slow voice that is low pitch, and then you can't change it. You're stuck with that particular sound. And I've had so many users that are like, man, I don't like this. I don't like it when it sounds high pitched. I don't like it when it sounds low. And just being able to make those adjustments on what is being read and how it sounds is very powerful tool for our users. Um, and some of them even like to find one that sounds like themselves because they're using it as their voice, like with communication. Um, a lot of the different communication tools that are out there for augmentative communication have that ability. And then some of our users feel like my guide is also an extension of their voice. Because unlike standard communication tools, which give you all of the options that you can possibly say, or only a few options of what you can possibly say, but organized in specific ways, unique to those specific communication apps, 
my guide is asking questions that you can respond to in the moment and gives options that are specifically tailored and related to the question that's being asked. So let's show an example of that, Kevin. Do you have one handy that we can kind of go through just to have like the choices, like the food preferences maybe in the public sure. library? Um, would that be under healthy living? Actually, you know what? No, there's food choices there. Can you go to how am I feeling today? It's in the uh, self-expression. Ah, it's in self-expression. Yeah. We rearranged everything. And so we have to remind each other where we put stuff. Yeah, how are you today? This one? All right. It's in self-expression. And some things are put in different Please let us so know how you're feeling today. I need some time first. Time. Let me turn that off. <laughs> so we're gonna right. turn. So you heard the automatic text to speech. <laughs> we usually turn it off when we do presentations because it talks over us or we talk over it. So this is a great guide because we use this, I use this a lot for clients to get them to understand that they can report what they're feeling, their body sensations, their emotions, and just for a regular check-in to get them used to having that option. Um, you can see this font looks very different than the font that we showed you in the other images. This was customized for the individual who created this guide and it has de-identified information. We were able to, to share it with everyone as a template. So very simple, um, big pictures. How does your body feel? It hurts. Where does it hurt? You could replace these stock images with actual pictures of the client. Um, touching those body parts, if that's what the client responds to, or cartoon emojis, whatever is going to help the client. Um, and you also notice that these pictures have the words below them. You could have it where it doesn't have the words. We can show you how those can go away too. So it's just the pictures. So it gives a few options. And the nice thing about that is, um, thing you were telling us, take a few deep breaths, you can work it out, is that a provider can also, think, you can also put feedback right in there, some reinforcement. Thanks for checking in. You can watch a video, it can go straight to that, it goes straight to your favorite YouTube video. It's a link that we can add it, we add it in there. You booked a cozy verbo mouth. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, and then, I'm, and then all I'm all done. Excellent, thanks for checking in. So those are just kind of some of those options for um, individuals who are not non-readers. But you can take any of those guides that we created that have all those words and add images as well to that. Okay. Uh, where's, were there any other questions about the features themselves or like in the guides themselves or? Because I kind of want to show the play tab too. Yep. Should I go for it? All right. So uh, another aspect. Oh, I see another question. Hold on. <laughs> sure. Sorry, yeah, Kevin. I'm with our Gretchen. Render. <laughs> yeah, Gretchen, I'm working on that. I'm working on that, Gretchen. <laughs> Kev, you can keep going. I'm working okay. on answering that question. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. So on the play tab, this is also per the user. Um, Guides can be scheduled and you can you can schedule a guide as many times as you want. You can have it repeating as often as you want. You can have um, uh, you can have as many guides scheduled as you want per day or whatever. Um, and so and they'll get a notification. They tap it. It opens up the guide for them. Um, and then there's also a, there's a today section shows them what they have scheduled for that day. It goes away as soon as they play it until the next time they have it scheduled. And then there's a favorite section, which is like, um, you know, for some users, the library tab is going to be a little cumbersome going in and out of all of these different shelves. It might just be a little cumbersome for some users. Now, to remedy that, we have this favorite section, which you can just, I always say, it's best to be used as like a recreational thing, you know, when you don't have something scheduled, you don't want to schedule every time you 
have to go to the bathroom or every time you want to make brownies or pet your dog or or you certainly don't schedule a meltdown, you know, or a, a panic attack or anything like that. So those might be things you just want easy grabs for. You can pop them in this favorite section. You, you don't have to go fishing them out of any library anywhere. You don't have to schedule it, any of that. Um, and so I think here is a good uh, transition spot of going from the user's perspective to the tech mentor's perspective. So from the tech mentor's perspective, you can help with editing guides and a user can do that for themselves as well, but you can help with editing guides as a tech mentor. You can help with scheduling guides like I'm showing you. But the first thing I'm gonna show you is actually monitoring. So everything, every time a guide is played, one of those guides that I've showed you so far that we played through, a report is generated and that re report records everything that happened in that guide. Um, so let's look at one that I just played. What's one that I actually like answered in? <laughs> um, uh, the apartment checklist, you missed some answers in there okay. and Good. in the job one. Okay, so this is what a, our reports look like currently. Um, we also have another set coming, but um, their date and time stamped at the top. It shows how many uh, or how much time I spent in the guide total and how many pages I viewed total. It's actually chronological for within my guide, of course. It's chronological. That means that uh, let's say they the guide itself is five pages long or 10 pages long. We'll go with 10. The, and this might show that they viewed 12 pages. Well, that's because they went through and on page six, they made an answer, went forward, but then they went back and they were like, no, 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 I didn't like that. And then they changed their answer. It's going to reflect both the first answer and then that they went back and changed it to something else. So it'll show the second answer as well. Um, then there's the page breakdown. It shows how long they spend on each page total. And it also shows how long they spend responding to any of the information on that page. And then, of course, it shows any of the information that they actually did <laughs> respond with. And then finally, at the very bottom, it shows if they did or did not complete the guide. Now, this information, this report, can come in in two ways. You can get it in this aggregate form. So after they play it, it shows up in a list of, of guide playing, like you probably just saw here. Or you can watch all of this information come in in real time through live reports. So basically, if I come in here, um, let's pretend that this particular account, so this is my, my sample account. So let's pretend that I am uh, my guide guardian for like five clients and all five of them are playing guides right now. All five of those guides and the people playing them are gonna show up here in this little section and it, you'll see some bars going across. It'll show exactly where they are in each guide and then you just tap it and it shows that report that we were just looking at, it shows it come in as they're filling it out. Which one was it? This one. So let's say they're on page three. It'll show viewing page three with a little loading circle. And then as soon as they flip to page four, all of this information is going to fill out um, for the monitoring and the tech mentor end. Um, and then... Uh, I think that might be it that I want to talk about with the monitoring, or did you have anything else you wanted to say about that? I Gretchen? did. So I actually have some clients that use that monitoring piece as sort of a log. They'll use it to track what they're eating. Like they may, they have a guide that's their food diary. They track what they're eating and then they go back and look at it, or they can share that with their doctor. When they go to the doctor, they've been working on nutrition they can share those reports and that information and they don't have to write it down somewhere else. They don't have to um, you know, keep all it. those food logs and all those diaries. And also, so they use it sort of as a self-monitoring tool too. Like, what did I do or a memory check? Let me go back and see, what did I do yesterday? Did I take my meds today? Oh yeah, I played my meds. Okay, I took them. Did I yes, I took them, okay. <laughs> because some of our clients do have issues with memory. And so they'll go back and use that reporting feature for self-monitoring as well as sharing that information with other individuals. I always like to point that out too. Yeah. 
All right. And so from here, I think, why don't we go into the, the building portion of this? We're going to show you how easy this is. Uh, <laughs> you'll see how easy this is. It's, it's very user friendly. So um, do we want to? Um, mm -hmm. I always tell people that I am not tech savvy. I really am not like I have base tech understanding. Like I can figure my way through things, but more often than not, we'll get into trouble. But with my guide and the help of like being able to access our tech support and Kevin specifically <laughs> is who I typically go to. We also have other tech mentors on our team that can help answer questions. I likened it when I first started using my guide as, as quick it's as easy to make a guide as it is to post on Facebook. And I stand by that. Because if you can figure out that, you can figure out how to do this. So go ahead, Kevin, take it away. Sure. So typically, a tech mentor is going to, let's say, let's say uh, we, uh, a user has a guide and something's just not working for them. Either they're not playing it or they are they might even be throwing something across the room because it's frustrating them. Well, a tech mentor is going to come in real quick and <laughs> they're going to say, okay, I'm going to help you. And, um, okay. And they are just going to change around any of the things that might be causing them some kind of frustration. So you notice, I just changed that image really fast. Okay. We don't like this title, get a job and keep it. That sounds too aggressive. So we're going to change it to, um, to job help. yeah job help perfect all right change so now the title's changed so now we're going to ignore this page so oh, i don't need that page i don't need that sample we, page can you show me how you can delete it this yes. is in my library it's not a sample Absolutely. anymore delete page delete done so now that one's gone and now it's gone mm -hmm. um I don't want to see the learning objectives every time I do this. Can you make that go away too? Just this uh, this little text box right here? Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like it okay. saying learning objectives. Can we make it? Okay, excellent. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I'm learning job seeking skills and become mistakes. Okay. Can we put a picture? It's kind of boring. Sure. All right. So How about... this, because this is, yep, I'm going to add an image um let's go with well i really know you that's, like madagascar how about that that sounds perfect it's exciting it makes it happy for you. okay that's the things that i'm working on just like those guys okay cool so see we've just added we changed a couple of things we put an image in there we left the goals because this particular client probably needs to see them but doesn't want to know that it's learning objectives because learning just makes it sound like i'm in school <laughs> User doesn't want to talk, think about going to school. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and go to the next page. Let's see what we can do over there. All right. Well, this page is a little bit more complicated, but that's okay. That's why I'm here. So how about we, um, let's say we make this look a little bit more dynamic. So instead of just black and white or gray and white uh, for the, the text boxes, let's change to um some bright pink text and we're going to make the background uh, that you're, you're right over something yeah i'm just thinking about things <laughs> all right blue <laughs> all right that's a little garish but... oh, that's hard to see can you change the font so the font's yeah. a little bolder all right I think and we'll you go keep purple. it the same color just yeah change okay. the font a little bit sure make it a little bolder let's go with all right let's go with Sigma. that one's good yeah that's good can we add some pictures for yes and no sure all right for yes we are going to do um uh, i like that smiley. last thing guy all right. And, and then, for no, that popped balloon is a good one to represent no. All right. The popped balloon. Oh, there, there it is. There it is. Yeah. yeah. So. All right. There we go. There go. Now we're going to go back. All right. They're a little yep. small. Do you want them bigger? And then, yeah. Can you make them bigger so they're. Sure. 
easier to see. That's a good size, I think, if you make them. Yeah, that I think will be oh. too big. But I don't want to see the words. I know that laughing is yes and the popped balloon is no. Can you hide okay. the text? Sure. There. Bam. Is that good? Okay. Yep, that's good. All right. So you can see it's very, everything is very tap and change. You tap this to change it, and then you change it. <laughs> um, all right. Oh, you know what? I don't like the teal background. Can you change oh, that? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I thought I didn't realize you exited out. I was like, wait, what all happened? Right. And Kev, I have, a, I have a question for you to address once you're done with editing, please. Sure. All right. What's what color do we want to change it to? Uh, I want it to be purple. Purple. OK, we'll do like a lighter purple, like a lavender. Yeah, that's good, like a light purple. Don't make it too dark. That's good. All right. Okay. Good, Sarah. Sorry, what's the question? Yeah. Um, let me get back to it. I was answering it. Give me one second. So Sorry. the question is, does the DSP working with someone become their tech mentor? They can. Um, it really depends on what the user wants and needs. So in some cases, if the DSP and the user agree that the DSP will help them with it, then absolutely. Um, otherwise, they can get help in other ways. They, there are a lot of different avenues to find a tech mentor. It's not just their direct support system, although we will all tech mentors will always take input from family and from clinicians who might be working and provide other providers who might be working with the client. But um, what we like to do as a company, Empower Me, we like to set up providers so that they can also be tech mentors if they so choose. If they want to help the user and the user wants their help, then we will go and train them how to use my guide or any other kind of software that might need that they might need help with. Um, um, we will go around and, and help them become that kind of a provider as well. Um, so if a user says, uh, and we can also give them a lot of different options. So we can say, um, okay, we have uh, a collaboration with E3, with Empowerment 3 at JMU. <laughs> um, we have a collaboration with them and they run Thrive, um, they run th these Thrive workshops and Thrive workshops are themed workshops. So you might be learning like jujitsu or you might be learning how to cook or you might be learning how to dance. Um, and you can do those either in person or virtual. They're like volunteer things. Um, and you can sign up for those. And there's going to be a whole list of which ones have tech mentors in it who are my guide certified or are certified with other technology and they can help you with your technology. Um, we all, and we have a lot of partners like that. And so, and if a user comes to us and they say, well, I really want, you know, I want my ABA therapist to know how to use my guide. And they say that they want to help us. We will help them, uh, figure that out. And Gretchen, did you have your hand up? I don't, <laughs> I don't know if you're saying you had something else to say. Um, well, yes. So Kevin, I think pretty much got everything that we needed <laughs> that we're trying to be said. So when you think about doing a tech mentor, a tech mentor can be someone designated that's already in the person support system like Kevin was talking about, or you can have a certified tech mentor who's had additional training that is more, um, more capable that way or someone that's being paid to provide that service, which is a little bit different. So just depends. Um, but we like to use the term tech mentor to really refer to anyone that's helping people use their technology because they're mentoring them in their tech, whether we're working on building some certification programs that might be coming up in the future. Um, when we were, we did mention that in our original description because we were hoping it would be ready to launch uh, by the time we did this since that was written a few months ago, but we're still in the process of doing that to kind of look out, be on the lookout for more information about this certificate tech mentor certificate program to be able to be more um, officially a certified tech mentor in that capacity, which and is a are, little different than designated. We are doing some uh, rather 
that certificate that you're she's mentioning that is with our collaboration with JMU and that is actually in the early bird kind of phase so we can certainly have discussion about that if necessary uh or if anybody's interested I should say um we we are doing the early bird stuff it's just that uh the the higher level certificate is not quite ready to roll out just yet um but it will be soon Anyway, go on. <laughs> Wanted to <laughs> clarify. Yeah. Sorry. Did anyone have any other questions about building guides or um, making changes to guides? One thing that I do want to point out is when you download for the free app, you have access to the public library and can play in the public library. In order to be able to edit guides, um, you would need to have access to the editing tools and that and that is something that we did mention that we can provide as a trial for you all if you are interested in that um, you can email us or you can just kind of let us know send us a message through the app and we can get that set up for you we'll let you know how we can do that i just wanted to put that point out point, point that out there um, and I'm having some technology issues myself for some reason, so I apologize. If all of a sudden they disappear, I, will ha I might have to rejoin from another device, <laughs> but I will try to make that as seamless as possible. Uh, anyway, so if you have any questions and you would, I think, can users unmute themselves and ask participants ask questions as well as posting them in the chat? You want to make sure yeah. that this is as interactive as possible. You can possibly even make suggestions while we're editing through that because we always like to say we are not the content experts for the most part. Um, we are the technology and the tools experts. We're the ones that know how to use the tools. Um, and I can kind of give some whys from a clinical perspective about why someone might not want to see words and just pictures, um, the visual distraction. Kevin, if you can go back and open the back to your, li your library and open the guide that we were editing that job help guide which is the one we were editing sure. over there you want to go and, into the and, editor or play yeah yeah go ahead into editing okay Hey, Kev, I'm just going to interject very quickly, if that's okay. Um, lots of questions in the chat about how this is paid for, which we will be happy to address as soon as Kevin is done showing how my guide works. Correct. Thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sarah. So we'll make sure we save time for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So go ahead and go to the next page, because that's just our cover page. And then if you look at this, it looks like everything is going to fit on the tablet on one screen. That's something that I oftentimes think about when I'm building a guide, because sometimes we might need to teach as a skill to be able to swipe up or swipe down. Um, that most of the times other applications aren't thinking about that, right? They're not thinking about how many times have you been trying to figure out how to submit something and like, where's the submit button? I've had that issue on many websites. I'm trying to figure that out. How do I, where do I scroll sideways? What do I need to do? Where do I find it? And so I'm always thinking about for our users who may be just learning technology and first experience with being able to use technology to get their needs met, to make requests, to interact with their world. Because from using my guide, we wanna be able to bridge into more explicit. So we're gonna start where all the information you need, like in that dishwashing guide, is on one page. And all you need to do is maybe go to the next page. So first, we're only gonna be working on advancing to the next page. Go ahead and go to the next page. Um, and then so we get to this one. <laughs> right now, when you look at this, it looks kind of like a mess. And that's because there's all sorts of programming happening underneath. Right now, the first thing the user is going to see is, are you currently employed, yes or no? And then based on all of the behind the scenes work the tech mentor, in this case, Kevin has done, um, based on what the selection is, now you can see that stuff that was grayed out now comes to the forefront. So when they select yes, it says awesome. Now we probably can also change this so it has those same pictures so it's consistent. Uh, and then you've got these options that's a checklist unless you choose more than one option you use that 
that big I'm done button. If someone just taps that, it's going to go straight to the end. And so there's all sorts of things that you can add in there. Now, for some, with a choice was made when this was created to put all of this on one page that might require that the user has to scroll up or scroll down. My client, my individual, I don't want them to have to scroll up or scroll down. So what we can do, I don't want to rebuild all of this great content, but I can duplicate this page and then delete what I don't need. So again, so Kevin's going to kind of show how to do that. All right, and let's and just now, delete this whole section maybe at the bottom. Yeah, let's just delete that whole section. Yeah, let's delete that. All right, and then maybe anything under awesome. Mm-hmm. Bam. Okay. That's so now awesome. this page is much more, it's awesome. So it's only going to do that. And then if they select no, it's going to take them to the, a new page, which will mm -hmm. have to put in some other background stuff, but it'll take them to that page with all of that other information. So you can really tailor it to meet the specific needs of the individual. I just kind of wanted to point that out there because I know sometimes that looks like, whoa, that's so much. Yeah. Um, and thinking about that user experience. So, Yeah, we always like to say it can be as, as minimalistic or as, as complex as someone wants it to be. So if you just want a very linear guide, that's fine. Or if the user might get bored by that, they might want something more complex, like what this guide originally looked like. Um, they might have more complex skills that they need to learn. So that would, of course, go with a more complex guide. Um, okay. And so do we want to maybe go into uh, some of the questions that Sarah was talking about? Yes, that sounds good since we only have about a half, we have about uh, 25 minutes left. So if anybody, no one has any other questions about the actual um, application, the app itself or my guide, the software itself, we can answer those questions about funding. So our funding process, Kevin, do you want to go ahead and just pull up the PowerPoint if that's okay? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah, that's because that way we can kind of get through. Sure the next couple of slides, because I think there are actually some slides after that. Um, Dr. McMurk made this, this presentation and we're giving us, so please forgive us if we <laughs> seem to be stumbling through different parts. So we're kind go. of filling in some gaps here. So when we're talking about the user, which is central to the experience, this is personal use technology. So it is able to be paid for through Medicaid health insurance, also through the waiver, um, as assistive technology or two pathways. Um, because it is covered as durable medical equipment under insurance. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with how waiver funding works, but it does typically get submitted through the state plan first. If they don't um, approve it, then it, we submit it through the waiver. And then that's kind of the way it works, uh, usually that's systematic, it. but it is covered under the waiver as well for those that have waiver funding. We don't have a slide that has that Okay. <laughs> Yeah, Sorry. we don't have a slide addressing funding, I realize. So that's why I was kind of just using this sort of as my talking point slide for that. Oh, actually, sure. go, go and go back to that. Go back to that other one where we were. Um, no, that one. Okay, so Sorry. referrals can come from various places, right? So the user, if it's personal use technology, assistive technology, that is where it is in, covered by insurance. We do have some users who are in their schools um, that they're using it in the schools and the school is funding that. So it's a little bit different. So there's different ways, different pathways to being able to get it covered. And if that did not answer the question, uh, we will be happy to answer it other ways. We have on the good of the lot and the last slide, we have who you can contact for referrals. Um, you can I always did, email but... info at, okay, go ahead, Sarah. Sorry, right. I did put the referral link in the chat okay. portion. Cool. Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. I did not put the referral link on here, but I will add that before I post the handout. Um, I did put like who you can contact. So our reimbursement director, Lori, actually is the one who figures out a way to be able to get it covered for our users. Like Sarah mentioned, 
Um, we are enrolled as a Virginia Medicaid provider and do provide waiver services, but we are also are enrolled also in other states. We get referrals from as far as New York, uh, Indiana, I think. Am I missing any states there, guys? I think we have someone heard from Florida, maybe? We, we And we just submitted to New York as well. Yeah. We've, yeah, Maryland, D.C., Oklahoma, um, Oklahoma Indiana, Ohio, Indiana, Ohio. Indiana, Ohio. Um, so, yeah, so we, we will, our reimbursement director will figure out a way to get it paid for. That's always uh, how we can help get that covered. Um, we have another question in the chat. And Kev, I okay. think you could probably speak to this. It's about yeah. travel training and GPS location integration. And the question says, does the feature where you would use travel training have GPS location integration in the event someone gets on the wrong bus or train? So I think maybe that speaks more to the that's device a, than yeah, to that's the a app. Complicated question. It yeah. would, yes, <laughs> which is good. I mean, thank you. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it depends on a lot of factors. So if the device has GPS capabilities um, and we can deliver, so with my guide, we can deliver that device in several different ways. We can either do, we have our web version. We also have three different devices by standard that we will deliver on depending on what the user needs and what the clinician recommends. So it might be either a, a it's like a six inch phone, smartphone, or it could be um, a 10 inch tablet or a, an eight inch yeah. tablet. And we'll also do accessories. So that might include um, a wearable watch that would interact with my guide in some ways. It might take the notifications of, of my guide or something like that. And then I believe, Gretchen, don't we have a GPS? Uh, or we're, we're working with, wait, where are we on the GPS? <laughs> you were the one who recommended <laughs> that, yeah. I know it's or not up, you, this but... is something that's come up a lot of times. I know that our technical developer um, and chief technical officer has been working on figuring out the best way to integrate that. And in terms of my guide, it's kind of come up, but there are other um, GPS systems that you can use and different ways that that could probably work. Within my guide itself right now, as it stands, um, that isn't there. But what you could do is if you are connected to like a Find My Phone and you're using yeah. live monitoring, then you would be able to see that. Um, so it would, from the monitoring perspective or from the tech mentor side, um, we're still kind of working to and do some of those integrations or some new things that are in the works. I know that were from what I hear on the development side. Yeah, we have, and we are also, so because we are a durable medical equipment company, we can theoretically get that regardless, any other um, kind of like GPS device or something like that, that mm -hmm. you might want, we can get right. that. So if you're interested in I'm assuming you might be talking about Angel Sense or maybe an Empers device or something like that. Empers uh, personal emergency response system. Um, uh, if you're talking about one of those, those are things that yes, we can get for you uh, or for your for the client, mm -hmm. I should say. Um, and in terms of integrating it, that's something that our developer is constantly working toward integrating new things. Now, the way technology works is it has to be built in a very specific way in order for that device or that software to interact with other devices or softwares. So we are always looking for devices that are built in that accessible capacity. So something, it's called an API, it's a long story, I won't go into it, but if something's built with an API, we can integrate with it. And so our developer is constantly looking for technology like that, that he can integrate into our reporting system in particular. I hope that answered the, I hope together we answered that question. I, I hope we did, I hope okay. together we were. Um, so I know that is something that we've 
it's a question that I bring up quite frequently to our developer. Can we do this? <laughs> so we welcome any of those questions. Uh, Kevin, can you kind of go back a section? All right. So we're we're talking kind of just to sum it up and bring it all around back to focus about where my guide fits in as electronic cognitive functioning system. I'm talking about being reimbursable by insurance. So in order to be reimbursable, it has to be supporting the user. And we know a lot about devices that support physical functioning. They support, we have hearing aids, we have walkers, we have wheelchairs, all of those support the person's ability to engage in the environment on a physical level because there's something visible that we can see that isn't working right, that's limiting their ability to function, ability to get on. I'm a hearing aid user. So right now this recording is being streamed directly to my hearing aids to um, assist not only with my hearing, but also with my auditory processing. Because I could have it on a speaker that's right next to me and turn the volume up really loud. And I would hear it but there would also hear all the other things that are going on around it. When I have it streamed directly into my hearing aids, it's optimized for my hearing condition so that I can hear all the sounds without all the background noise, it's filtered correctly. So it triggers my auditory processing so it's processed appropriately. I like to think of sometimes of my guides sort of in the same way. So from a functional cognition perspective, as an occupational therapist, I think about that all the time. But what that worldly word means is all of the processing things that have to happen to enable us to be able to see what the output, the product is. So all we could see when Luke was washing his dishes, when Kevin was telling Luke, you need to take your bowl of the sink and put it in the sink and he throws it in his face and he winds up wearing spaghetti. Um, <laughs> was I asked him to wash the dishes, he threw the spaghetti at me. We don't know what happened in between hearing that direction, processing that direction, and then making the choice or his body throwing the spaghetti rather than walking the dish to the sink. We don't know, we can't know. We have no way of understanding that process. But what we do know based on Kevin's report what seen when he started using my guide is that when the directions were now presented in a, that format with a picture and a direction without hearing his brother say anything he was able to do it right is that correct am i yeah you know, 100 percent mm -hmm. he was able to do it and he'd seen pictures before because like kevin said he took the task analysis that is BCBA had created for him, but that wasn't working. Just seeing the pictures all on one page wasn't working. It was having it on a screen that would read the direction. I don't know if he was using text-to-speech or if he was just looking at it, but it could have done that and showing one image at a time, step-by-step. Step. Maybe that's what made the difference. We can't tell you what made the difference, but we can tell you is using that format was the method that worked for that individual. Um, and that's the biggest piece of what my guide brings to the table. Because this next, this last thing here is sort of walks us through all the things that happen internally before someone can create something, which is like the end result of learning. First, you have to be able to remember all of the basic concepts. So when someone says, put your dish in the sink, do time to do your dishes. You have to be like, dishes, what, what, what does that require? What do I have to do to do my dishes? I need to take the, take the dish, put it in the sink. I need, and you have to like remember all of the steps that that's required. You have to remember, I need soap, I need water. Um, so you have to remember. You also have to, be able to understand that idea and concept. You have to be able to understand what that means. You have to be able to understand how all those things work together. Then you have to be able to apply it. Then you have to actually be able to do it. Um, and then later, obviously, we're not really analyzing or evaluating or creating when we're doing the dishes. So that's a different type of step, task analysis. This is really about learning a new skill. But you can kind of see how all of these things fall into play. 
There's also other cognitive processes that we don't have on this chart that you have to think about that impact someone's ability to do those things. There's the environment. So there's all that sensory information that's coming at you at one time. There's all of the psychological and mental components that are impacted on that and the social component. If I don't do my dish, is it going to make my brother mad? Or is he going to be upset with me? Or, you know, um, what was that sound? Those are all sorts of things. Dominic, who this was created for, often says when he was started using my guide, reported, was reporting on just completing his daily routines. And Maria, Dr. Mark Wirt, his mother asked him, she said, you put no, you could have lied. I wouldn't have known if you brushed your teeth or not. You know, you're honest. And if I asked you, you would tell me, yes, you brushed your teeth. That would be your verbal response to me because he says yes to everything. She said, if I looked at you and said, did you brush your teeth? You would have told me yes. I would have known that you hadn't because I can see that you didn't brush your teeth. Um, but in the device, you said no. And he was like, well, the device doesn't give me the stink eye. <laughs> it has no expectations of me. There's no social pressure. Um, so that is another way that you can kind of address some of those things that may be impacting that end product that we don't know about. And my guide allows the user to create the pieces that are going to allow that to happen. Another thing that sometimes can happen too that we've mentioned through using developing this use of technology to support function to support your own cognitive processing, your own function. Because some of our users start using my guide and they get really good. They're building their own guides. They've been using it. And then they're like, I can use just standard apps. They'll start using their calendar on their phone instead of their my guide schedule. They'll start using the um, reminders app on their phone to kind of help them with their memory piece. And so they can kind of, I sometimes call it like graduating from my guide because the reason we have my guide is because there's lots of different accessibility features and lots of different apps that can help you do things. As an occupational therapist, I've tried tons of them. And that's kind of how I got pulled into the my guide universe is because I've tried all these different things, but that's time consuming to have to go to lots of different apps. And then that teach someone to remember when I'm stressed out, I need to go to my calm app because then I can meditate. When I need to check my calendar, I need to go to my calendar app. When I need to remember the steps for how to do something, I need to go to the specific task analysis app. That's really complicated to remember all of those different applications. With my guide, they have one place they can go and it's all specifically customized to them, to their needs. They're not having to meet or our users or even myself sometimes, I use guides for myself, isn't having to meet the expectations that were set as a standard for everyone else. Um, everything within their my guide is specifically for them which I think is the biggest piece about it. And I hope that you can take that away from here. And that's the, what part of being a tech mentor is, is helping our users and our clients understand that technology is something that they can use that's a resource um, that isn't being put on them. No one else is telling them they have to do it. Um, that they, you know, that other people, that's less expectations and social pressures. It's, this is me. Like you hear how they're saying, I'm the boss. I'm the boss of my medication. <laughs> I tell them when I need my medication, <laughs> you know, um, that's a really big empowering thing. And that's what my guy brings to the table. So any other last minute questions or Kevin, did you have anything else you wanted to share to wrap up? Um, no, unless we wanted to dive a little bit more into like referral processes, but I don't know if the questions have swayed that way. Sarah, what are you, what are you hearing over there? <laughs> so the chat is quiet. Okay. Um, I did post a referral link cool. um, in the actual chat section, not the Q&A section. So if you have people who you think 
could benefit from my guide and it might be a good fit for them, you just click on that link and fill out the information. And then one of us will get in touch with you for the next steps. Thank you. And then kind of going to get, there's the last one. So like I said, you can, I put the downloading decoration directions <laughs> right here. <laughs> You're able to access your free trial. Um, and like I said, you can download it. The app is free to download. In order to be able to access the tools, you will need to contact us so we can turn those on for you um, and start that process if you would like to try all those as well. Oh, yes. That is something we should address. Anybody here, if you want a, a full free trial of a license, meaning you have access to the actual customization tools, let us know when you sign up for my guide. Email, I mean, you can email me directly, kevin at mpm.care. I will get you hooked up and I will make sure actually that you're not even on your own. <laughs> so we'll give you the full treatment if you want. And we're going to have, um, I sound like such a salesman right now, don't I? <laughs> we'll have uh, one of our tech mentors come in and, and show you how to use it. So, um, and uh Yes, and if you had any any question about other devices, if you have any question about other uh, or about tech mentoring, more questions. If you wanted to any other kind of consultation with us, including my guide, if you want us to do another presentation of any kind, let us know. Um, email any of us, um, and also I don't know why Sarah's not here, but or on this list, but you can also email her, <laughs> Sarah at npm .care. Um, I'll put it in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any one of us are, are happy to help you with whatever you might need from us. But yeah, I would say other than that, any questions? Oh, hang on. We have two questions. Let's see here. Um, Chrissy, you can go ahead and ask your questions if you want to come off mute and ask them. Thanks. That's easier. Sure. Um, do you all provide sessions like this to present to uh, like if my team, if yes. I wanted my team to yes. hear this. Yep. And um, the second question that I have is um, is one about the the features of it. Um, so I'll give an example. So let's say that a parent has a teenager who's using this to learn things. And you can hear up. So I understand like the prompts, the timers, all of that. I've worked with other similar mm -hmm. um, platforms. So it's interesting to see the differences. Um, is there a feature that, for example, if let's say the parents downstairs and here's a lot of bumping around upstairs, which might indicate frustration. Is mm -hmm. there a way, if the parent is one of the tech mentors that has the access, is there a way for the parent who's downstairs to send sort of, for lack of a better terminology, a text message or a prompt to ask the question, are you okay? Yes. Do you need help or something like that? So that it's not a scheduled question, but one that's impromptu based on sounds or other things that they are hearing that might be yeah. indicative of a problem. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different ways that this can happen. Um, if that device, if the device that they have that we've delivered to them, if it has data on it, like perhaps the, the family put it on the plan, their, their phone plan or whatever, then yes, you can send an actual direct text just like you would any other phone. But then on top of that, if let's say they don't want to put them on a, a plan like that, a, a, like a phone plan or, or anything like that, that's fine. So either they can do an email, they can do whatever, or they can plug it right into my guide. So they can create a guide or they can have a running guide where it's just they update it on the fly whenever they want and then just prompt it through like the scheduling section or something like that to uh, prompt them in that moment. Um, it, it's not something that you have to do too, you know, a uh, uh, schedule or whatever. It's not something that you have to do too far in the future. Um, and I believe, 
I, I, there there are lots of things that I could work through right now and be like, well, I have this idea and this idea and this idea. <laughs> so it really depends on on what the user would need, uh, and that would sort of inform how you would you know the next steps that would be taken to to produce exactly what you're asking for. So I think one of the things we forgot to mention um, was that when you're connected to an account as a guardian, so so that you can see those reports, the other way thing that that gives you is the opportunity to remotely schedule things for the user, to build guides and place them in the account mm -hmm. like Kevin was talking about. Um, so you can do that remotely. And you, you uh, can you adjust the to settings too. Right. You can adjust, you can adjust settings remotely. Mm -hmm. So for right. example, to make sure I'm understanding this correctly, let's just say it was somebody who they didn't want on a phone plan because they didn't want all kinds of random surfing, that kind of thing. If you hear, let's say, bumping around upstairs and you were downstairs, you could go into something you'd set up in advance to ask about, are you okay? Can I help you? I hear lots of noise or whatever your uh, banter would be. You can have that already set up and then you could go into the scheduler and schedule it to send like, a minute later yeah mm -hmm. yes okay so that in other words it doesn't have to go on for a very long time yeah yeah you, you can a little bit of advance you know it's not going to send it in five seconds i'm assuming but you could schedule it for a minute later and it could it could mm -hmm. signal to the person who's upstairs right. that there's or it could read it aloud or however you have it structured it mm -hmm. could get their attention yep. yeah. yes okay. And we actually, you know, there's a couple, like I'm saying, there's lots of different ways. Um, Maria, Dr. Mark, Mark, when she first created this, her son would take the bus uh, transport home and he would get really anxious. He would start picking his skin. So he would play the, um, I'm on my way home, find my house guide. And she would get the notification that he'd started playing that guide and she would sort of watch okay, he's playing that I've got, I find my house guide. Okay, so she'd watch and see what was happening, sort of to look and see, is there something that needs to come up with that live monitoring feature? And if she noticed that he was um, hitting this button, she could call him because that would be, that was helpful for him in that moment was that she could call him and say, okay, you know, let me talk to the driver or let me tell me what you're seeing. Um, so there's lots of different ways it can be done. Uh, it could prompt, like Kevin was saying, a text message. You could call someone. Uh, we also have some users who use it to communicate with their family, like when they're ready to be talked to, <laughs> when they're ready for someone to come knock on their yeah. door and tell them to get ready for their day. Um, their family knows to wait until they've played the uh, morning guide and they have it scheduled. And so they'll knock on the door if they haven't heard anything. And then he'll respond, yep, come on in or... Uh, I'm not ready yet. I need five more minutes sort of a situation. So there's lots of different ways that can play out. So I have another question. kind of question related to that, just to make sure I'm understanding all the features. So for example, if it's someone who's you're doing travel training with and you have all these prompts set up that are their specific photos and routes and all of that, and you're in the process of fading your actual physical support, if they have it on a smartphone, and obviously I know they need to have a plan and data for this type of thing, but is there a feature where they can have it virtual, where like a FaceTime feature? So if you're fading, they could show you, is this the right bus number? And you could respond in real time to say, yes, this is the right bus number, you know, go ahead and get on or, or whatever, you know, move to your next prompt or whatever you would want to say, but you can, you can, it has that feature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of tricky to talk about because I don't want to cause crazy confusion, but yes, you can make that accessible. So, um, I mean, you're talking about a FaceTime call with somebody else, right? Well, so what I was wondering is, so if, if let's say they're going through their travel training prompt and the bus pulls up and so, for example, like a fixed route bus, 
in our community, it what's on the front of the, depending on where you are in the route, the signage on the front of the bus could change because when it pulls up, it might be heading eastbound, but you might be at the end of the line. And so once it hits that spot, then the, 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 the information might change to westbound. So they were in the middle of their travel training. And let's say you just started to wean where there's not a person there with them all the time. Is there a feature where they could continue to follow their travel training, but, and, and I'm not a tech person, so I might not have like- Yeah, all you're of the, fine. <laughs> I, I just kind of know when what I want to be able to see. So is there a way for them to continue to stay in the prompt and also have this face-to-face -face virtual yeah. oh, conversation? I see. Yes. So that they say, yes. is this, I'm making sure. Oh, you went mute, but. <laughs> um, Kevin, this is Karen. Yeah, hi, um, Karen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest that maybe you and Chrissy or Chrissy can uh, go into your live stream tomorrow morning or something and sort of. Sure. Um, go through some of these mm -hmm. um, individualized yeah. types of questions. Um, we're at the end, of our, actually over our end of our session, and I just wanted to remind everybody to um, go to the session. If you click on the name of the session and scroll down, you'll be able to rate the session. That's important because we use that information uh, to plan our next trainings. But I also want you to know that I that there's a live stream going um, on their sponsor site or their exhibitor site. I can't remember where I found it, where you can go in and you have a personal audience with um, the My Guide folks. Is that correct still? Uh, yes, so that's correct. Are, and, and we're going, it. we're going over just, there right now. Yep, I okay. just put the link, I just put the link in the chat. So if anyone wants to hop over there, people will be there. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, I just want you to Chrissy again. I just wanted to make sure that um, everybody knew that they could do these more in-depth questions, but that we- and They're great questions. Really yes. appreciate all of your information. And this was fascinating. Um, go and watch the videos and stuff on their um, exhibitor site and sponsor sites. It's quite fun. But again, thank you, Gretchen, Sarah, and Kevin. We appreciate all your information and we appreciate all of our attendees for attending this session. Again, thanks everyone. Thank, Thank you all. Thank, Thank you so, so much. much.